Hey, rich friends, it's Dr. T Mac here, and welcome to the T Mac Inspired Show. In today's episode, I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Leticia Styles. Listen, she is a published author, speaker, model, consultant, a marketing consultant. She is an all around fantabulous businesswoman. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear a little bit of her story and what she has going on. So stay tuned. Good to chat. Yes, yes, yes. Letitia Styles. Letitia Styles. Is Styles your real name? It is actually. It's my maiden name. So is it? Uh, yeah, it is. And uh, the funny thing is, so I, I told this as like a a a fun fact about me before in another interview. But um, my my dad's cousin, <laughs> those okay. relation. My dad's cousin was uh, college roommates with. John Singleton. Okay. And there's a movie called um, Boys in the Hood. And one of the characters in that movie, his name is Furious Styles. Yep. And that character name came from him being my dad's cousin being roommates, college roommates with John Singleton. So yeah, so that is that is the real that's the real that's the maiden name though. So okay. I'm married now. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it because it's, I think it's an, an amazing stage name. Yeah, it, it is. And that's the reason why I chose to keep it, uh, because I think it is a great uh, stage name. Um, but if you need to send me a legal document, I'm going to make sure I sign the, the name that needs to be there. <laughs> that part. Make sure right. all the checks are made out, too. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining me um, and blessing my audience with your presence. You know, I've, I've been following you. Um, I admire mm. your work. I love, love, love everything that you're doing, um, especially you. in that uh, space where a lot of people are afraid to, to just jump out there and do it. And I wanted mm. to bring something up. You said uh, go from best kept secret to best paid expert. Yes. Why did you come up with that little slogan? Yeah, so the reason is uh, me being an introvert, I've always felt the need to operate business in a way that feels congruent to me. And when I first got started with my business, with you know trying to book clients as a service-based entrepreneur, I really felt like you know I'm really good at what I do, but I have a hard time you know being that outgoing person, like going to chat chat people up and, you know, God forbid there was a networking event, like there's just not something I wanted to do. So what I learned how to do was I learned how to create systems and marketing strategies that allowed me to have people to come to me. And once I kind of figured that out, I realized, okay, there's also uh, an element of branding that needs to go in, into that. And so the thing that I like to help clients do is, you know, Let's help you figure out what your you know, core thing is. What's your message? Mm -hmm. And then also let's make sure your marketing speaks for you and that it speaks for itself so that, you know, whether you're introvert, extrovert, doesn't really matter. Someone should know who you are, what you stand for and why they should work with you before they even get on the phone with you, before they even have a conversation. And that's going to help you avoid all of those you know, awkward conversations or trying to prove yourself because there's no need to, to prove yourself, especially if you're, if you're an expert. Right. So how did you get in this space? Uh, it's a long story. I don't know how, how long we want to go, but I'll, I'll try to truncate it. And then you can ask questions based on what you want to learn more about. Um, but essentially, um, I graduated uh, during the Great Recession. And I graduated with a finance degree, which is like the worst time to, to have one of those. And I had a hard time finding a job. So I decided that I would just create my own. At the time, I created a personal finance blog, and I was just talking about my own experience and also what I had learned in college. And that led me into creating content for other financial professionals because I got the question of, hey, you're writing a blog. How do you do this thing? And you know, can you manage my Twitter and social media? 
And that led me into realizing that I love marketing. So I started doing more on the marketing side. I started teaching workshops and that's what ultimately led me into coaching and helping uh, business owners with their online marketing, their digital marketing and helping them, you know, step into that next level version of themselves. Oh, so when you graduated, so you call it the great recession. I like that. So yeah. that was like what? Oh, eight, oh, nine. That was 2010. 2010. Yeah. When I graduated. Yep. So what, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, or how do you compare the great recession to mm -hmm. what's going on right now in this space that we're in? Oh, completely different completely different right now. I feel like, so I'm in a different place, so okay. I'll caveat with that. But as far as with what's going on now versus what was going on, then there was almost no hiring happening then. Mm -hmm. So you did not see signs that said, Hey, we're hiring. We're looking for people. There were um, very few businesses that were, you know, I was delivering sandwiches because I, I was putting out application after application and I just couldn't find a job. So the hiring market was really weak versus right now, like I'm, I'm in Atlanta and I'm seeing signs all over the place that are saying now hiring, we're looking for people. There's recruiters that are reaching out and, and saying that they need somebody to do this, that, and the other. And so I think the main difference right now is that you can still find a job. You can still, you know, earn income, mm -hmm. which was something that made it difficult for people back then back to then. like, keep their homes and, you know, do all of these other things where they, you know, people had to start declaring bankruptcy. The housing market right now is also still strong. It's still a seller's market. Interest rates might be higher, but there's still homes that are being sold. There's not enough inventory from what I uh, interview. I just listened to the other day. There's not enough inventory on the market. So like this feels just like a, you know, a, a tiny setback versus <laughs> <laughs> the devastation right. that kind of happened last time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I'm, yeah, I agree totally with, with what you're mm -hmm. saying, you know, being in the, uh, real, you know, I'm a real estate investor as well. Yep. I'm like, this is like, it's, it's, a, it's a seller's market. Yes. But when you're mm -hmm. an investor, it's also a buyer's market because a lot yeah. of people are afraid right now mm -hmm. and they're afraid of what's going on, you know, um, in the economy. And they're like, a lot of investors with big portfolios are like ditching mm -hmm. their portfolios, which, you know, people like me are like, come on, I'm ready to buy. Yeah. You know, just two weeks ago, I just bought eight more, eight more parcels of land. Like I'm ready. Let's right. go. So the reason why I brought that up is because in mm -hmm. this, you know, in the coaching space or the marketing mm -hmm. um, space that you're in, I, I, I sense it. I'm not real sure mm -hmm. if I have my finger on the pulse, but what I sense is a lot of coaches have kind of backed a, backed up a little bit from mm -hmm. um, it, their their message. They're they're kind yeah. of pivoting. They're have you seen that? Yeah, I actually see that as well. So when I first entered the coaching space, there was a rush of people that came in from the direct selling market, and so everybody was a coach. And I feel like that kind of flood of that flood of people that came in, they're kind of like trickling. They have been trickling out over the last you know couple of years. And at the same time, there's also a shift in the coaching industry where people are a little bit tired of, let me show you how to do it instead of, hey, can you just do it for me? And so I think there's a balance right now. So one thing that I've discovered is that uh, recently, as in the last year or so, I created an offer where it's hybrid, done with you, done for you. Mm -hmm. So there's some elements that are done with you, like a traditional coaching or consulting program, mm -hmm. but then there's a couple of done for you elements built in. And with the right business owner, like I said, you know, working with someone who is, you know, for example, like a financial advisor who wants to create a course or an accountant who wants to add a uh, done with you coaching service along with their accounting services which those are the types of clients that I service with that type of business owner, that structure makes sense. And so I will say that there's a lot of coaches that are pivoting because honestly, like we're just exhausted and I'm, we, I'm speaking for almost everyone right now, but <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of people who they want everything for nothing. And they want you to not only show them how to do it. They, they want you to show them how to fish. They want you to bring the fishing hook. They want you to put the bait on there. They want you to throw it out there. And then once you catch the fish, they're going to say, mm, that's too small. 
<laughs> it's like, you know, you've only been doing this for, you know, less than a year. You really expect to catch this huge, big fish. And so I think that's where the exhaustion is coming in, at least um, definitely for, for me on my side, mm -hmm. which is why I have pivoted my services just a little bit to really, uh, you know, work with that person who understands the, 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 premise behind a business and the startup and all and all those things so yeah yeah for sure for sure let me ask you what what is the i saw all your nice beautiful modeling pictures so you are Thank a you. professional <laughs> model right so i started uh in 2020 so mm -hmm. uh, back in 2019 i made a decision that i wanted to have abundance in all areas of my life so okay. i started looking at everything and um i'm married my husband, I love him. I feel like relationship stuff, I'm good. I'm solid on that. Uh -huh. And then business was flourishing. Business was doing well. It was growing. You know, I was still kind of getting started, but I saw, you know, the, the proceeds from that. Mm -hmm. And then I would look in the mirror and I would say, like, this is not really, you know, where I see myself being. I, I, I have a vision in my head of what, what I want to look like, how much I want to make, what I want my relationship to be like. So I wanted all areas of life to really feel abundant. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to give myself a goal so that I could reach that. And I'm not the type of person that just says, okay, well, I'm gonna eat right and exercise for you know a certain amount of time. Like I wanna, I basically put my feet to the fire. Yeah. So I said, all right, you're gonna get on stage in a bikini in less than six months. So <laughs> you gotta be ready for no! it. No. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I ended up doing. I, I decided to compete. The organization I compete with is called the WBFF. It's World Beauty, Fitness and Fashion. And I thought I was just going to do it once. I said, okay, I'm going to get on stage. This is a goal that I have. And let me tell you, the first time I got on stage, I was like, this is like, this is me. This is my, like, this is, this, this is, this is my zone. And so I decided to continue on. And with that came, you know, photo shoots, doing photo shoots, um, prepping for shows, getting ready for that, and really just kind of immersing myself in the world of Letitia, like I love being on stage. I love performing and it's something that allowed me to really be in like my highest vibration. And so I actually have a show coming up in a couple of weeks, getting ready for that one as well. Oh yeah. yeah. So what do you do to, pre to prep for, for the show? Let me know. What do you do? Yeah. So, um, what that looks like is you have uh, typically what's called an off season and an on season. Mm -hmm. So off season is where you would still be paying attention to your food intake and uh, you know how much carbs, fat, and protein you're eating, but you can be a little bit more lax. Like you might go out to eat on the weekends. You know, you you're still focused on you know lifting and and growing muscle, but it's it's like life. You get to live. Okay. Then on season is usually going to be anywhere from 20 to 12 weeks, and this is where you're focusing on leaning out. So you're going to drop your food a little bit. You're going to do more cardio. You're going to lift. And what that looks like is a lot more meal prepping. It looks like um, pr prioritizing your sleep. So there's things that I don't do and, and events that I just don't go to because I know that I've got to, you know, I got to be on on my sleep, no alcohol, uh, you know, just being really sure. more tight to with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, very you know, you do that on. for what's that? Being very mindful. Exactly. Very mm -hmm. mindful. The discipline comes in. And you, you know you do that for uh, anywhere from 20 to 12 weeks, you do your show, and then you do like a reverse out of it for another uh, 12, you know, 12, 12 to 15 weeks, depending on how deep you had to go to cut. So overall, you might cut for, uh, cut and reverse for like four, four to five months out of the year, if you're going to do a show. I know it sounds like a lot, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. So yeah. you're, you're prepping. Mm -hmm. And then the prep is like 12 to 20 weeks, right? Yes. But the, the, where you get really, really serious is really around that eight to six week mark. So uh, right now I am, I'll be five weeks out on Saturday. So at this point it's like strict meal plan. Like I'm eating the same foods every day, um, making sure that I get a gallon of water every day. So all these things have to be prioritized. Uh, you know, making sure I'm getting eight hours of sleep every single day and like all of those things eating at the same time, because anytime you introduce a new variable, it could, you know, shift your, your check-ins. Okay. So that's like that last, like six, six weeks after that, the reverse out is not so, it's not so difficult. So how do you reverse out of it? 
So your reverse out is you, uh, you'll do a little bit less cardio every day. So let's say you got up to doing an hour of cardio six days a week. As you reverse out, you might start doing 30 minutes of cardio, then 20 minutes, and then you might take all cardio out as you get into your building. Uh, your food, you would, depending on how your body responds and your coaches would have to like look at this with you, you might go directly right back into increasing your food right away, or you might increase it little by little. So they'll add like another 200 calories every week until you get back to a, a maintenance where your weight is not fluctuating anymore. And my favorite part is the day, the evening of the show and the day after the show, because that's when I have the things that I've been missing. So like I'll have a burger, <laughs> I might have pizza, because once you get back on your reverse, it's, you're, you're kind of in diet mode again, because you want to be careful not to ruin your metabolism as you kind of go back out. Ah, you know, I have a, a, a friend. Well, she used to be a client of mine mm. um, in my when I used to do hair. She was uh -huh. a client of mine and she she was like all into this, you know, that world and yeah. the fitness, the bodybuilding, the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to go to some of her shows. This is one thing I noticed about her mm. the day after whether she won or not, whether she placed or didn't place. That mm. next day, she kind of spiraled. Like yeah. she would get really depressed. She would eat a lot. She would gain all of this weight. And she, I mean, she would blow all the way back up and yeah. plus more. And then she would do it again. Yeah. What is it? So it's not bodybuilding as a sport is not actually healthy. It's not, this is personal opinion. It's not actually considered healthy. And that's because you're getting to such a low body fat percentage that is not at like healthy body fat percentages for, for women, for men. And then you're, you know, kind of trying to come out of that. And that's the danger that could happen. So this is one of the reasons why I really like competing with the Federation I compete with because their look that they're going for is not extremely lean. They want someone who you look like you're just, you know, hanging out at the beach, right? Okay. It's not necessarily like you need to be, it's not a bodybuilding competition. Mm -hmm. It's world beauty, fitness, and fashion. So it's about fitness. Are you fit? Do you have a fashion look? Do you have beauty standards? That's really it. Ah. And so what that looks like is like afterwards, and this is why I love working with my coaches, mm -hmm. afterwards, I'll have that meal or two that I've been mm -hmm. missing and then we know like I'm getting right back on it because if you don't, your body has been in such a starvation mode. It wants to pack on whatever you got. It's like, whatever. oh, you're eating all this food. Let me make sure we're safe in case you try to do this again. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you have a good plan to reverse out, you'll be fine. So, mm -hmm. so I think that's yeah. what it is. Then, I, I mean, it, I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. it just, it yeah. just, it looked, it was painful to see, you know, to watch yeah. that back and forth with her. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this can't be, you know, but anyway, I didn't think it was normal, yeah. but yeah. So, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> I didn't think it was normal at all. I'm like, I wouldn't want to do this. Yeah. Um, so how, how does, cause you have mm -hmm. to be disciplined. I'm just going to say this. I know for sure you got to be disciplined and you know, yeah. me trying to lose 10 pounds is like a, a, a thing, right? It's yeah. a whole thing. So how, how does that correlate with business yeah so the very first time that i did a show uh, like i said back in 2020 i made the decision the mental decision i said just because i'm focusing in on my body that doesn't mean that business gets to lapse it doesn't mean like you know that it has to go down mm -hmm. because like i said i was looking for abundance in all areas mm -hmm. so uh, you know i literally just made the decision i said okay the business is going to continue to grow it's going to continue to move forward and what that looked like for me was really being very uh, focused on my time and, and starting to kind of time block. Mm -hmm. So at first I had to, the way that discipline works, at least in my opinion, is first you have to be very focused on it. So I had to go to the calendar and say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm going to do this thing. And then from here to here, I'm going to do that and so on and so forth. And then eventually discipline is easy because you've already put those things in place and you can just flow with it. Mm. So that very first uh, show that I did was actually the highest revenue month in my business oh. because I made that decision and I said, it doesn't have to go down. And that was something that I really, honestly, like I wasn't expecting that, but 
it's just really a testament to the fact that you get to have abundance in all areas of your life when you make that decision. And from there, now it's just very flow. Like I already uh, got up, I woke up, um, I usually wake up around five or six. So I've mm-hmm. already done my cardio for today. I've already done my lifting for today. So I'm, I've checked that off, I'm done. And then from there I work, uh, I usually start work around 10. Mm-hmm. So I'll work from like 10 to three, 10 mm-hmm. to four ish. And then from there, the evening is mine to, you know, to do whatever. And that's, that's actually a lot of time to, you know, if you really like actually block it out, it's actually a lot of time to enjoy, you know, I spend time with my husband. It's just a matter of what's important to you and what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get there? Mm, That's a good one. That's a good one. What's important to you and what are you Mm -hmm. willing to sacrifice to get there? As a coach. Yeah. (laughs) It is very, very easy to identify when someone does not put the thing that they hired you for as priority, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How do you address that with your clients? Um, So I have like two two different mindsets, two different buckets that I I, I put clients in. Okay. Generally speaking, when I work with clients one-on-one, I kind of know that this is the priority for them. Because number one, there's a higher investment. Mm. It's going to require a lot of time. And I usually shrink the timeline. So when I work with clients one-on-one, we're usually only working together for either a VIP day or a uh, 90-day program for one project. So that means we're sprinting. So this is your priority. For a group program, usually my group programs are a little bit longer, like 12 month or six month. And it's because I know generally speaking, if you're coming into a group program, you're kind of like, testing the waters, you're still trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you need a little bit more time, life might get in the way, whatever it is. And so I don't necessarily address it with clients after the fact, but at the start of the program, at the start of the group program, I do have a video where I talk about how life tends to get in the way. And I talk about what that looks like. I also let them know that it's okay to to like give yourself grace. (coughs) You know, if it's a matter of if you know that this is not necessarily the priority, that's okay. Like you've got 12 months. So, you know, come back to it. As long as you're on the path more than you're off the path, you'll ultimately get to your destination. Mm -hmm. And so that allows me to really protect my energy so that I'm not Mm -hmm. doing more for them than they're willing to do for themselves. And that's, that's kind of how I, I work those. Okay. Do you find, I love talking to other coaches. Do you? I do. Um, Do you find, um, trying to figure out a right way, do you find a better transformation Mm -hmm. with clients who have a shorter amount of time or a longer amount of time to work with you? I've found that the clients who get the best transformations are ones that create their own timeline. And the reason I say that is because I've had clients that have purchased a done for you course and have gotten amazing results, but I see them, I see them, they're in the, like whatever the free group was at the time it was a Facebook group. They're in the group asking questions. They, you can tell, like, you can tell when someone's moving through something and actually taking action. Yes. And so it's really just a matter of like, are you willing to put in the, the effort and the time that's required? And also because i feel like sometimes people have unrealistic expectations are you also willing to give yourself grace if it doesn't happen as soon as you thought it would and are you willing to keep moving forward even if it doesn't look like it's working because if you're working with someone that has success and has helped clients get success why should you be any different The only reason that your success might be different is because you might have different circumstances. So just keep moving through and, you know, everything will be fine. Oh, my God. I don't know if that was the question you asked, but I felt like. Yes, yes, yes. And you gave gave even more. I love it. I love it. Because, I I mean, I I feel the same way. It it, it depends on the person, not Mm -hmm. necessarily the coach or the mentor. It's it's the person becoming that person Mm -hmm. because you can have all of the steps you can have all of you can write in your journal every day you can affirm a thing every morning when you wake up you can Mm -hmm. do all the things but if you haven't become the person 
If you really don't believe in that transformation, yep. it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Yep, absolutely. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So what do you have going on? Let, let, let my audience know what you got going on. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, what you just mentioned was, is a good segue into it because becoming the person is the key. And after I've shared resources with clients and strategies and all of these things, ultimately what I've realized is that if, uh, unless you take on that new identity, I call it assuming the throne, unless you take on that new identity, then all these other things that you're doing mm-hmm. might not you know, necessarily work for you. Mm-hmm. So uh, the program that I've got, it's like a, it's a three day intensive. It's called the seven figure messenger intensive. Mm-hmm. It's designed for someone who is a coach, a consultant, or wants to create a coaching or consulting program, but they also understand that they have a message, a message that's deeper than just, hey, let me help you do X, Y, Z thing. Mm-hmm. They, they want to change the world mm-hmm. and they really want to impact people. They want to impact their communities and they want to be able to do that in a way that's congruent with their values. And so during the seven figure messenger intensive, we get really clear on the, the dream. What do you want to do? Uh, in all areas of your life, as I mentioned before, like I, I'm really a big advocate of abundance in all areas. So we do that on day one. Day two, we start looking at monetizing like the seven figure messenger. And then that's where I kind of start breaking down a little bit of the strategies and the structure. And then on day three, we talk about assuming the throne, stepping into that new identity. Mm. And every client gets a copy of uh, Dream Decide Do, which is my manifestation goal planner. It mm, is uh, essentially... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's essentially what we do in day one. So everyone gets a shipped copy of this, as well as the um, the, the PDF version of those first day's activities. But it's just an excellent opportunity to come back to, always come back to, as a business owner, what? why am I doing this? Mm. Because as you, I'm sure, understand, money is not the be-all, end-all. I never want to say money isn't everything, because some people hear that and they're like, well, you know, But money is not the be all end all, because once you get money, you realize that there's other things that you need as well. Like you need a sense of fulfillment. Right. (laughs) So I always want to make sure that whatever I'm doing with clients, we're always looking at the whole picture Mm -hmm. because I want you to not only have money. I want you to have what you want in in your relationships. I want you to have what you want in your health and your wellness. And we want to really bring it all together. So that's the seven figure messenger uh, three day intensive. And uh, I've got a special offer for your listeners. They can go to Letitia.tv slash TMAC, Letitia.tv slash TMAC, and um, they can get all the links as well as the free gift that I have for them as well. Yes. So when is it? Um, So I host it every month. So the next one is actually coming up in a week, um, but I'm also going to host it next month. And so when you go to the site, it'll give you details on the next upcoming dates. And website one more time is Letitia.tv, L-A-T-I-S-H-A dot TV slash T-Mac. All right. All right. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Three day intensive. I love, you know, I love those, those power pack intensives more than I like long drawn out. You know, I've heard of people do 21 day challenges. I'm like, what? Woo. My, my introvert energy just, it couldn't, it just couldn't handle it. I tried yeah. doing a, you know, I've done seven day, five day and three day where we can go for a little bit longer and really like dive into the material. That has been the best thing, not only for me, but for our clients as well. So I really, really enjoy it. Absolutely. Well, where can everybody find you? Yep. So I'm, um, I'm on, gosh, I'm most active on, I would say Instagram. Okay. Um, but I'm on all platforms, Facebook, okay. whatever. But if you go to the, if they go to the link, Letitia.tv slash TMAC, uh, at the bottom, I'll have all of my social profiles, YouTube, okay. so that you can click through and uh, check everything out. All right. All right. One last word for, this is for your ideal client. Cause she's listening. Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is for your ideal client who feels stuck. Mm hmm. What do you what what advice do you have for her? My advice for you is that you have done enough. You are enough. And now it's time to step into that next level version of yourself. It's time for you to assume the throne, see yourself as God sees you and step forward into your inheritance. It's yours. Let's go get it. Yes, yes. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was a great conversation. Yes, always, always. Hey, Rich Friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Letitia Styles. If you did, don't forget to click like, subscribe, share, comment, do all of those things that help keep me um, going and keep all this good information and good content that you guys love to hear, see, and participate in. Don't forget to click the link in the bio to join Letitia's three-day intensive. This is a seven-figure intensive. I am sure that you guys are going to love it. Um, don't forget to click the link in the bio. Until the next time, remember, the T-Max said you can have it all.